hates sports to the game. He hates sports. <laughs> Bro, come on. He hates sports. <laughs> Bro, come on. No. <laughs> <laughs> That video is absolutely hilarious. I absolutely love it. And uh, of course, we're going to talk about Paul Felix in this video as well as Conor Gallagher because it looks like the moves are about to happen that Gallagher goes to Atleti and we're going to secure Paul Felix on a permanent deal this time. And uh, we're also going to go through two other transfer news stories around two players that will uh, likely depart from uh, Chelsea. Felix was here for six months on a loan move when Potter was here and he had ups and downs. A lot of people question whether he has been mistreated wrong or if he is just a sleeping giant that is soon to reach his potential. He just needs to be in the right environment. So. We're gonna talk about that as well in this video and before we continue any further as usually if you want to be a legend for me make sure you like this video, subscribe to my page and hit that notification bell down below. Fabrizio Romano is coming with the latest stories. Joao Felix has completed the main part of medical test in London and he's gonna sign his contract later today. It will be valid until June 2030 with an option of a further season to 2031. So he signs on a six plus one year contract. And Conor Gallagher will fly in the other direction to Madrid when all documents have been signed for Joao Felix. Mixed feelings around him. If we're going back to the loan spell he had on the Potter, he of course in the first game made a reckless challenge, got a red card, but after that, in a lot of performances, you can see that he has massive talent. He also contributed with like four goals, I think, and maybe one assist. I see him as a second striker, and uh, that is a support forward behind a, a main proper big striker. Or you're using him as a false nine in number 10 role, but of course he can play on the left hand side as an inside forward too. And I remember Potter using him in different uh, positions and that is good that you're having attackers that can fill many roles um, it adds good squad depth. I thought that when Felix was on the potter you can see he's the type of player that can get you off your seats because he's that skillful uh, he uses tricks to his advantage <clears throat> to go past players and drive forward through the center of the field uh, or in other deeper areas. And his loan move ended when Potter was here and then eventually Frank Lampard as an interim. He was valued around I think 100 million and our board did not want to trigger that or if it was Pochettino they didn't want him. Um, but now we have gone one year later and um, one and four months later or something and now he is going to return to Chelsea and he himself has said he had a really great time in, as a Chelsea player and he really wanted to stay here when um, his loan move ended for roughly a little over a year ago. Samareska wants to constantly heavily dominate possession, play with a high line, have many players in the opposition's final third inside the box and constantly attacks no matter what opponents we are facing. I think that is completely different football compared to what Diego Simeone um, is playing. And Jao Felix, I think he did all right at Atleti. Sure, he can, could have done a lot more if you think of the price tag, um, but I think he would flourish and release his full potential here as a Chelsea player because I think Enzo Mestre could definitely get the best of him. Now, first I wasn't unsure because I'm thinking like where is he going to play? We're adding so many players to the squad, we also need to get rid of ones but it looks like we're going to move on Sterling for example and that of course is open up space for Joao Felix. Him as a rotational player 
think it's going to boost the quality of the squad in general. One of his biggest strength is his movement. He's so silky on the ball and it's really difficult for opponents to mark him and stop him. He knows the timing when to drop down, receive a ball and then finding other advancing players in the final third. I think he's also intelligent with making runs behind the back line and also get into the opposition area with the right timing. Another positive thing around Joao Felix is that he's often taking shots early and not too late like other players do. Uh, sometimes he tries even first time uh, finishes uh, but sometimes he just takes one touch and then trying to get a shot on target immediately before the goalkeeper has any chance of uh, getting into right position. From what I saw when he was here, when Potter was a manager and what you have seen when he's playing for Atleti or even back in his Benfica days. See, he's a creative player too and, and can find those crucial key passes to his teammates that get scoring opportunities. He has an eye for that. Um, so a very dynamic attacking player that is skillful, creative. Another thing I really like about uh, Felix is that he is also very aggressive in the press. And Enzo Maresca is going to need forwards that are willing to be aggressive in front of the press uh, by trying to win back the ball. Reading up the positives compared to the negatives, I'm pretty content with Felix and he's definitely a player you will enjoy watching at Chelsea. Things I'm not so sure of was that where is he going to fit in that we have probably a bloated squad and I don't want to go into the season with that. And I also want the manager to really want this player. Um, and I hope he's going to find a position for him. I would personally put John Felix in the left offensive 8 or 10 spot. As you see on screen here. I to figure out where he will play. And I think he's going to rotate with KDH and Nkunko here. And he can also be utilized as a winger. And if he is a winger, he can cut inside and interchange with that player. If it's in Kunko, KDH or someone else. Let me know how you feel around Jao Felix. I wasn't so sure as I said in the beginning. But when I'm waiting up the positive to the negatives. And where he could fit in and etc. And that he actually really wants to be here. Which is very key as well. Feeling optimistic about this move. And uh, <laughs> I'm already laughing. Because he's an exciting player to watch. Moving on to Conor Gallagher and Fabrizio Mano. Clarifying that. Understand Gallagher has been authorized by Chelsea. To travel to Madrid in the next 24-48 hours. Deals was already done. For a 42 million euro fee. And Simeone was pushing again for it. All done between Gallagher and Atleti. Uh, all done between Atleti and Chelsea. Here we go. Confirmed. So Gallagher will finally be able to switch to a manager and, and um, board that really wants him. And as I joked about before. It's going to be Diego Simeone's Gala Bulldog. <laughs> I think it's going to suit him to Atleti like a glove and I'm going to follow see how he performs there I've been so happy seeing the development Gallagher has managed to um, do here at Chelsea um, massive determination he got such a strong mentality I'm going to wish him all the best in Madrid moving on to the last two transfer stories and that is two players that is likely going to leave or one of them has already left. The first one is Armando Broja and this is coming from the Athletic. Chelsea are now prepared to let Broja join another club on loan with an obligation to buy worth around 30 million pounds. Moted club Ipswich are trying to secure Broja's signature but Chelsea's decision to include a loan first has alerted other clubs. So it's good that other clubs also showing interest in Broja and if they don't have the money to pay now it's better to loan him and then they pay 
uh, one year later in the future. An obligation to buy simply means that you're going to pay the money later and not now. Uh, some teams might not be able to afford it now. I'm going to just talk about Amanda Broja. I think he has been extremely lucky with that long term injury. He missed so many games, therefore he couldn't really get those crucial minutes and develop further because I thought Brody had a promising future. But this looks like a shadow of himself. He's not confident at all and has lost a lot of his abilities. Uh, I'm sure he's going to gain that back with regular game time in another club because he's, he needs game time if he's going to reach his potential and develop further. It simply didn't work out, it's very tough competition, but I wish him good luck in the future club and I think Ipswich would be a perfect club for him. The last story is from Fabrizio Mauna exclusive. Burnley have agreed deal to sign Bashir Humphries from Chelsea, loaned with a mandatory buy clause. It will become permanent for five year contract. Uh, Burnley see Bashir as a key defender for now and the future. Bashir Humphreys from the Cobham, extremely talented too, has been on a couple of low moves both in Germany and in the championship here in England. And uh, he's done quite well there and I thought he has also been promising, especially last preseason when Pochettino was here. Uh, but uh, but um, we have purchased other centre backs now. It's tough competition there. Some of the centre backs we have purchased was unnecessary, and we could have instead just turned to the academy because we have massive talents there that is literally there for free. Um, so I hope our uh, owners and board can rethink and and look into the academy and understand that there is plenty of bowlers there. You don't always need to go into the market and buy unknown under 23 players uh, because it's not so sure they are going to perform. We see what the final fee is going to be uh, later in the future, but it's first going to be a loan and then it will be a mandatory buy clause in the contract and he's going to sign on a five year uh, contract deal. Uh, so wish good luck to Bashi too and I think uh, Burnley is a good club for him move on to so that's all around the four transfer stories today let me know your thoughts in the comments down below and i happily read it and i thank you so much for watching and i'm out guys peace